welcome to the Henry Schein Dental Academy webinar series. My name is Adam, Marketing Specialist, and I'll be your moderator. We are excited to welcome Shannon Pay Sprinker as our speaker tonight as she covers aerosol reduction in the dental office, specifically best practices and product reviews. Shannon is a certified dental assistant practicing for over 30 years now, an international speaker and a published author. Before we get started, we have a few reminders for everyone. At any point during tonight's webinar, we do encourage your participation through the chat and Q&A feature. Please type any questions you might have into the Q&A section of your control panel, and we will answer them live at the end of the presentation. And Henry Shine is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand. Shannon, thanks for being with us. We're looking forward to your presentation. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. And um, I want to thank Shine and most importantly, all of the manufacturers tonight who allowed me to really evaluate and most importantly, give you know feedback on all of the different pieces of equipment that we're going to talk about tonight. I am, again, a uh, Shannon Brinker. I'm a dental assistant. I have been for almost 30 years now. Uh, seems like a long time. <laughs> and, um, and I do a lot of product evaluations. I uh, was working with Dr. Michael Miller, for those of you that may have heard of him or know him, with Reality Publishing. I was one of his editors. I also work with Dental Advisor, um, which is an amazing company. And both of those Really, I learned from each one so much. I have to give so much credit um, for really teaching me and helping me to understand about product evaluation. I now do a lot of product, eva product evaluation, but it's very different than those two um, that, um, that really what we're doing is we're bringing a total team perspective. And that's what I want you to get tonight. A lot of the feedback is not just going to be from me. It's from my team and some of the other clinicians that I have worked with. And, um, and really a variety of, of, you know, what we're hearing from them, how I feel, most importantly, trying to put it all together and give you some, um, you know, some really perks about each one, but most importantly, having a better understanding of aerosol reduction. And that's what this course is going to be about. But I also want to make sure that you know that, you know, with all the technology that has evolved over the last couple of years, we really want to make sure that with the increase in procedures that now more than ever it is critical to make sure that we not only have protection for ourselves for our patients but we want to make sure that we understand what does aerosol reduction mean and how do we do that um you know we want to make sure that we're not inhaling all these airborne particles that we see and these aerosols really are produced by all the procedures that we do whether it be restorative or in hygiene and this is where we really have to think about what it is that we're utilizing and most importantly being aware of the risk what we call invisible risk and that's what i want you to think about tonight and when you think about invisible these are the risks that are taking place in our ops whether we um you know when we follow these recommendations that we're going to talk about tonight you have to be really serious and considerate when we think about you know, not just procedures during, um, or the aerosols during the procedure, but we have to think about before and most importantly after. And that is where I think we really have to, I think with team members, we just assume that we're only at risk during a procedure and you are absolutely wrong. You know, those are the things that I want you to really think about because this is really a misconception, I believe from team. When aerosols are created with a high-speed handpiece, ultrasonic scalers, um, any other instrument that, um, that the spray not only carries particles of water, um, but also bacteria, viruses, blood, saliva, um, we have to understand that these aerosols can contain up to 100,000 bacteria per cubic foot in the air. One of the most important things that we have to do to protect ourselves and the patient the rest of our team is to really reduce the aerosols and the droplets, what we will refer to as a spatter or splatter or spray. Um, we have to use intraoral suctions. There is no if, ands, buts about it. And believe it or not, there's still practices today that don't have this, uh, you know, this kind of control. And I have friends, most of them are hygienists that are telling me that they do not have the equipment that they need to protect themselves and protect the patient. And this is something that, again, as you know, owners of a business, 
we have to make sure that we're protecting ourselves, protecting our team and the patient. And that is a lot of things that we're seeing right now still in a lot of practices. When we think about aerosol reduction, you know, one of the things we want to make sure is that you do have an understanding of what we use tonight to be able to put together this presentation. And not all of these slides and all this information came from me. Um, we really gathered a lot of various information from the ADA, the CDC, from OSHA. Um, I'm also a member of OSAP. And if you're not a member of OSAP, really encourage you to do that. Um, and one of the things I will say is that I am a dental assistant. And what I'm going to be talking to you about is really from my point of view, but also, you know, I'm going to refer to um, some of the resources. But again, this is based upon what we see and most importantly, what my colleagues are saying. I want to thank my good friend Lynn Richardson, who is a dental hygienist tonight and getting her perspective and being a clinician, but also a speaker and also my doctor, because one of the things that's tough in dentistry is to ask our doctors to try new things, right? So for any of you team that are out there tonight and listening to that, uh, you already know what we're talking about, right? Um, it is getting the doctor to let us try new things. So it's hard when we're we're really, you know, we're, we're creatures of habit. And so we want to release that tonight and really maybe open your eyes to the possibilities. And we also want to think about what are we going to talk about tonight? You know, how we as dental professionals can offer the most effective practical methods to help reduce um, any type of overall risk of infection. We also want to make sure that we really think all the manufacturers tonight that are going to take part in our evaluation and most importantly allow us to be honest with you give feedback and most importantly talk about these products and materials and how we can really and truly have the most effective practical methods really to help reduce that overall risk of infection so tonight we're partnering with the isolite dry shield we're going to show you the colzer's ivory relief this applies PureVac um, and Zerk's Mr. Thirsty. And we're going to first focus on Zyrus Isolite 3. And a lot of team members and a lot of practices have had the older Isolite. And I want you to be very excited about this new, um, you know, new component. So we're going to get into that first. But before we start, I want you to really think about um, aerosols. And when we say that, you know, there was a recent study that um, basically um confirmed that high volume evacuation removed more than 90 percent more aerosols than a slava ejector and I, I don't think that's something new to us we we already know that right um that's not rocket science but what i want you to really think about is what what we know now is about 96 to 97 percent of the aerosol that we're worried about can be controlled with the hve not a slava ejector um, so again, it's something to really consider if you're not already doing that in your practice. When we think about utilizing the lowest, um, you know, aerosols possible, generating any armamentarium that we can use when delivering any restorative procedures, hygiene procedures, it is really important for us to, again, have consideration. When we think about um, high, you know, evacuations, we really want to make sure that whenever possible, we're utilizing them really to remove, again, any airborne contamination um, before it escapes, you know, um, into any immediate treatment site. And we want to minimize the number of people also in the laboratory. You know, I was lucky that um, I'm able to go back with my seven-year-old um, because he has some, um, you know, some special needs, but they were really, really adamant um, about us being careful. And I had to follow the same procedures, the same guidelines, and I really appreciated that. So when we think about, again, reducing the aerosols for contamination, anything that's going to escape, um, not only the laboratory, um, the laboratory area, the operating area, and that is from the front to the back. Don't think because you work up front that, you know, you are not someone that's going to be um, having to worry about it. You're not someone that's that's having to think about all the things that we're, we're really going through when we're in the dental laboratory. The aerosols are just as um, important for you to know as the dental um, assistant, the hygienist, the doctor that's in the back. So we really want to make sure, again, everybody is careful. We think about the, the problem. A lot of team members don't really know exactly what that means. And the problem really occurs when we have these viral particles that are produced from coughing, sneezing, any dental care. These particles can potentially travel 20 feet, 20 feet. 
you know, when we think about an infectious person and then we, you know, really think about secondary infections, you know, elsewhere in the environment, we are, you know, really, again, these particles really can contain in one area. They're suspended in or can maintain in any area. They're suspended in the air. Um, and even after the person who uh, emitted them really has left. So even if your patient has gone, they coughed, they left, um, they can still infect us. That's what I don't think you understand. Even if a patient coughs, sneezes, and leaves our op, do you know that that is still in the air? The surfaces are still contaminated, you know, and, you know, some of the things that we really want to think about is the longevity of COVID-19 um, in various places. And let me give you some numbers here. When we think about, you know, the virus, it is, um, you know, viable up to 72 hours after application to plastic, stainless steel surfaces. Um, it also is up to 24 hours on cardboard surfaces, up to nine hours on copper surfaces. Um, and, you know, when we think about viable in suspended aerosols, it is up to three hours, three hours. So these are the numbers that you really have to think about and talk to your team about. And after you watch this presentation, you really should take it back and have your team really watch um, you know, this, not just for understanding equipment that is available to you, but most importantly, understanding the time frame. Because I will tell you, and still we started doing more research, no one ever really told me about the time, you know, and really looking at how long um, this is viable. So very, very important for you to understand and know. They also want you to really think about the least three potential sources, um, or at least three different ways or sources that these airborne contamination um, dental, within dental treatment um, with dental instrumentation, saliva, uh, respiratory sources, and really when you think about the operative site, these dental hand pieces, you know, ultrasonic scalers, we got these air polishers, um, air abrasion units, you know, they really are going to produce the most visible aerosols. Um, you know, each of these instruments are going to help remove material from the operation site, but we have to think about, again, the aerosol spray by the action of any rotary instrument, ultrasonic vibrations, um, combined uh, any type of water spray or compressed air. You know, the water spray usually is the portion of the aerosol that is the most visible, visible to the naked eye. We know that and also is noticed by the patient. But what is, you know, what is it that we don't see? When we think about where, you know, we really want to focus on, you know, the emphasis that, you know, for a suction system here. And again, thinking about all the years that I was assisting, my face being right in front of the handpiece all the time, you know, and even, you know, just acknowledging that's not just hygienist. I mean, you think about an assistant, our head is bent and in the mouth, just like the doctor is. And a lot of times we're bent and, uh, and, and deep in the mouth probably because we can't see sometimes, no offense to you doctors out there, um, but we know that utilizing a high speed HVE is gonna help us with um, those large volume of, uh, of aerosols. And you know, evacuator that puts a high vacuum, uh, vacuum really, you know, it, it does not remove a large volume uh, of air such as used routinely in hospital suction, but it is not considered an HVE when we think about um, what is it that we're utilizing. You know, when we think about, you know, a evacuator that pulls a high vacuum, um, but does not remove large volumes of air, when we think about a slava ejector, right? That is no comparison. And, you know, the usual HVE used in a dentistry really has a large opening. We already know that. It has a large opening around about eight millimeters or greater and, uh, and is attached to the evacuation system um, to remove these large volume of air up to 100 cubic feet of air per minute. That's what we're looking for. So, you know, again, going back to the slava ejector, not to knock it because I use it, um, but we do want to make sure that you understand that's a small opening and that is not going to remove these large, um, you know, aerosols, most importantly, large enough volume of air um, to be classified as an HVE. And so that's what I want you, again, to really think about. You know, when we think about it, it's important that where we've got this aerosol cloud to be controlled in the greatest extent that we can possible to make sure that we're reassuring, you know, our team and most importantly, our patients. And we really need to recognize, too, that, you know, there's lots of different ways that we can isol uh, isolate for the patient, you know, utilizing rubber dam when we possibly can, um, you know, thinking about all the, um, you know, the things that we can use to control that aerosol. But again, going back to 
um, the HVE. We know that, you know, they say around 90%, but this number keeps changing and going up. So I'm seeing now uh, from various resources anywhere from 94 to 96. And so for me, I, I love that number going up and uh, hope it continues to go up. Um, but tonight, again, we're going to focus on, you know, several different um, aerosol reduction devices. And um, I want to talk to you about those. And one of the things I want to make sure of is that you're using one and you can't just do qu any quality dentistry without some type of isolation. And if you do, it, it won't, if you're not, it won't last. You know, we know that. And, and one of the things that we see a lot is, you know, when we're not using isolation and we wish we would have, when we've got brackets that debond for orthodontics, we've got bonding uh, crowns and composites. Um, cements, things like that. When we think about, you know, we should have been uh, used a better isolation or use better isolation. And so this is where we really want to make sure that, you know, we're making sure that our dentistry lasts. And so, it, but it's also got to be easy, right? It's got to be easy and it has to be comfortable for the patient. It has to be comfortable or they're going to complain, right? So this is what we really want to look at tonight. And the first one that we're going to talk about is going to be the Isolite 3. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the Isolite 3 tonight. Very different than the uh, previous versions, okay? So what we see now is uh, better visibility. We also know that, um, that you know, with utilizing devices like this, we, we can make sure that we are minimizing that, you know, contamination. Um, we also have, you know, brighter illumination. The one thing about the Isolite 3 is that you have a white light and you also have a true amber light. And I can tell you, we do a lot of bonding in my office. Um, and the biggest concern for my doctor, even though he's wearing loops and he has a light, we got an overhead light, um, is, you know, really concerned about us altering the setting times, um, you know, based upon the light um, that's illuminated from his loops or from the overhead. And sometimes we even turn it off. Um, but one of the things that I will say is that this really allows us to control it. And you'll see that um, by having that amber light right on the right in, within the Isolite 3, it really makes it nice to be able to control it. The other thing is, is that um, we can keep the Isolite, you know, with, um, you know, helping us to be able to, again, isolate all the areas. But I want you to really think about this is that um, we've got, you know, controls where we can go up. Um, and, and really have, you know, a higher volume of suction if we just need it to, you know, come down a little bit. Um, we've got these, um, these controls that really allow us to um, turn it up full blast, I would say, and then also turn it down. And let me just share with you um, just a little bit about uh, the Isolite 3 and exactly how you would install it. I can tell you that with our team, one of the things that I did was that I didn't want them to read the directions. I wanted to see how fast they could put it together. And, uh, and I will tell you that, you know, it's a beautiful box. When you open it up, you're like, whoa, this is really nice. And everything is really compartmentized uh, within the box. Um, but I really think the presence is, um, is again, a plus. And a lot of the, um, the components, at first, when you open it up, you kind of get a little scared. But I can tell you that we were able to put it together uh, pretty quickly. And most importantly, um, was pretty easy to, um, to, again, get ready for.
let's talk a little bit about um, the Isolite 3. When we think about, you know, again, going back to uh, the pluses is having the three um, levels of light. They also having that ambient light is really great. Having um, on the top of the um, of the isolate itself, we can turn it down. We have three different levels. Um, we also have um, uh, you know a really thinking about different um, you know sizes. And let's talk about that for a little bit. When we get into the sizes, it's got um, several different sizes. But I also want you to think about. Um, you know, having these light pipes to be able to make sure that we can um, keep everything clean and most importantly, be able to, um, you know, see as many patients as we can, um, you know, without having to worry about, um, you know, decontamination. We also want to make sure that you, and this is probably the most important thing, and I kind of stole it from, <laughs> from uh, Isolite 3, um, is making sure that whenever we're using any other, any devices just like this one, but I tell you, I really like what they did. Um, they really gave us some sizing. When you think about pediatric, extra small, um, you really want to only have one finger. And when you think about uh, bumping up to the small, you're going to have two fingers, medium is three, and the large um, is a four. Now, I also want you to think about this is that... Um, I think the misconception is, is that we just assume because the patient is a tiny patient that they're going to need uh, an extra small or a small. Um, and that is not true. This is a true test that you really need to think about um, the opening here because this is not a, um, you know, these ends are not uh, autoclavable. So once you put it in somebody's mouth, it's a single use item. So I do not want you to just waste them. And that is something, again, that I had to tell my team that doesn't really, at the time, didn't really know when we were opening the box and they were putting it together um, because they were trying it in on themselves. And, um, and I will tell you that I always want to try it in on me. I always want to know how it feels, um, how we're going to put it in, and most importantly, again, um, what the patient is going to go through. But the last thing you want to do is not really follow um, the ruler, I would say, and waste the ends because, again, it's a single use. You know, when we want to also instruct the patient when we place it in the mouth that we ask them to open wide, really as comfortable as they can. And uh, again, after we do the measuring what measurements, and then what we're going to do is we're going to, um, you know, take out, um, you know, making sure that we put that away, but most importantly, making sure that we uh, place it in the patient's mouth correctly. So first thing that I want to think about is, you know, all the different sizes, which is great. But I will tell you, some of these we did not use as much as we did others. Um, we didn't use the pediatric because we really don't see any kids in my office. But I will say that if I had a pedo, pedo office, um, pediatric and extra small would probably be the only ones I would ever utilize. Um, in our practice, we really utilize the small and the medium. Um, they do have large. Um, but I will say that, you know, when I go back to reordering, I'm really probably just going to utilize the small and the medium. But again, it is nice to have the six different sizes. Um, and again, having that to really um, fit a wide range of patients. So it really helps us to think about the all, all those ages, right? So let's talk a little bit. Let me show you. I was actually the patient for this one. And, and, um, and this is why I said, you know, it's really important for me to know what it feels like. Uh, I always want to know what it tastes like, whether it tastes good or not. We know in dentistry, nothing does. Uh, but I really wanted to know how to place it. But most importantly, I wanted to watch my team do it and just kind of see how easy it was. You can see here that Cindy is, um, is placing it. And one of the things that I will say is, um, you know, want to make sure that um, you are placing it, but you're following the insertion of the bite block. That was one of the things as I was watching her put it in, making sure you follow, um, again, the anatomy uh, of the occlusal surface of the maxillary and mandibular arch. You can see how bright it is. I mean, it is super bright. And I think that was one of the reasons why they gave us the three levels of illumination. Um, because I can tell you, if my doctor has his light on, I've got the overhead light, and then I would have this light shining as an assistant, uh, it's a little blinding. <laughs> so that's a huge plus to be able to turn that down. One of the things that I will say my doctor really enjoyed was the fact of not having to use the overhead light. As a matter of fact, we actually now kind of turn, we actually kind of, we turn off the light of the op. And one of the things that we do see is a lot of anxious patients and uh, those patients that, you know, 
um, are fearful of the practice. And I will say that there is something about turning the light off or the, uh, the um, arbitrary light off gives them a soothing effect. But by having this illumination, um, it really allows us to do that. Because if, if I am, as the assistant, just relying on my doctor's loops and they move around, <laughs> which he does, um, I wouldn't be able to see, you know, and, and we know as assistants, I can't have a light on mine uh, and him have one on his because uh, we would do a light show. So this is, I think, a huge perk. And again, having the three, because it was just, if it's just a one, um, it would be tough to utilize it. So I think that is really, really great and, and making a decision on what works best for you. And if you're, if you're working alone and you don't have um, a light source on your loop. So again, a good plus. Let's look here. I think this was the most, um, uh, you know, uh, I guess great thing and what my doctor thought was the best part is that he was able to get his hands in there, um, edge the tooth, place bonding agent, um, but most importantly, has big hands. So that was really, um, I think for him was the best part because you know being able to push the tongue back because we know some patients have tongues that are like a wild animal, right? You want to cut it off. Um, I'm not one of those patients, but I've had patients like that, and so I really feel that this um, will help control that. Now, listen, some of the other devices we're going to talk about um, are going to retract the the tongue as well. So I don't want you to think that you know I'm just giving a hoorah for the Isolite 3, but it is the first one. Um, but one of the things, again, that I think has the number one perk is the three levels of light, and most importantly, having this illumination, uh, you know, ambient a, a, a light that you can really control. As you can see here, he is cementing two of my crowns that had to be bonded, uh, and I do not want that cement to set up, and then have to use a little saw blade to get that cement out, right? Um, so again, that's really a great plus, and he's really talking to me about it as I'm sitting in the chair and giving me some feedback, which I love. Um, and most importantly, hearing Cindy's feedback is really good because you know I want you to know that we, you will not have to give away your um, you know you can't just not have an assistant. One of the things I think a lot of assistants worry about is that. Um, is that, you know, they're going to do away with us. And I hear a lot of the ads and I see a lot of this, you know, it's an assistant to the doctor. You really don't need an assistant anymore. And that is such a lie because listen, that is not true. Um, it will aid in the fact if you're working by yourself, a lot of EFTA assistants out there are placing composite. Um, hygienists, I think there's a lot of hygienists that really enjoy it. My good friend, Lynn, who I mentioned at the very beginning, she absolutely loves the Isolite and she cannot live without it. Um, and, and I think this is where we really and truly, you know, want to think about the hygienist, you know, from that point of view too. So let me share with you Lynn's video here. She's using the ultrasonic and she also does a lot of laser therapy. Um, and if you haven't ever seen her courses, you really have to check those out. She is amazing, but she cannot work without the isolate. And she told me that she's like, I can't even do dentistry. And I don't think that I would even see patients if I didn't have it. And when COVID hit and she was moving into a new office, she didn't have an isolate. So she was having to hold a high volume suction. And she said, Shannon, she would call me just about every day. Oh my gosh, I am dying. My hands are killing me um, because she was trying to hold the HVE. And we know that hygienists are not trained as assistants are, right? I mean, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. So to ask a hygienist to retrain themselves to hold the high volume suction is really tough. I mean, it's really tough. And for you hygienists that are listening tonight, you're shaking your head yes that you do understand and feel the same way so again a lot of really good perks here you know having the light um very very easy again um to control any saliva uh the suction is nice because you can turn it up or turn it down um i think having um the ambient light again another plus um you really do need to read the instructions and making sure you know like i said i had my team open it up and try to put it together and there was some stopping and go but in the end it was you know fairly easy but the biggest obstacle was the plug for me in an old dinosaur, you know, op, right? Um, because there wasn't really one close to my chair and I, and I had to actually have the cord kind of hang or in the floor. Um, but, um, you know, for these new ops and we were a lot smarter when we got the new equipment and the new ops, right? Um, so that won't be a factor, but just kind of keep it in mind where it's going to be. And, um, and, and that way you can, you know, utilize because it, it's going to need a, a source, right? So that's enough for the Isolite 3, okay? Now let's talk about the Isodry. The Isodry, um, you know, is a very, very good product. There's a couple of perks that I really enjoyed 
and liked about this product. You know, with the um, uh, with the dry shield, and we think about the difference between the isolite and the dry shield is this one doesn't have a light, okay? Um, and so when we think about, you know, um, the dry shield, this is something that, you know, when we think about um, the comparison here, and with the, um, now let's talk about the dry shield. Now, one of the things that I want you to really think about is the dry shield compared to the, um, uh, to the ice light three, the dry shield does not have a light. Okay. But there's a lot of good perks that I really enjoyed, um, about the dry shield. And that's what I want to kind of just mention. Um, it is a high volume, you know, isolation system, very similar. Um, and it does have bite blocks that are firm. We can remove the bite block. And I think that was probably the number one perk for me is being able to remove the bite block, having that bite block that you could slide off. Um, and not have to use it if you didn't need to, um, or if the patient maybe is complaining or maybe has some some discomfort from utilizing the bite block, you can remove it. And um, and I will say that I, I like the fact to be able to remove it and uh, and use it for other procedures, right? Because sometimes we don't utilize um, this type of system for maybe a procedure if a patient has a bad disc, um, joint issues. Um, you know, we have to be really careful, but I will say that it was nice to be able to now have an extra bite block um, if we needed it and it just slides right off. So that to me was a huge perk. The other thing was, is that um, I like the fact that we could mix and match, um, you know, any combination of the, and most importantly, you can sterilize it. That is number one, being able to sterilize it. And um, I think that's where we think about waste we think about sometimes landfills i know people think about that um but most importantly you know being able to if we tried it in and it didn't fit we could try in another one right and we wouldn't have to worry or most importantly have that uh payroll deduction uh you know from wasting that um you know that end of the device so i think this is where the mouthpiece so this is where um i think again the difference between the dry shield and the isolite 3 come to play now once in place you know we we had really good retraction suction um airway protection you know i think those were the things that were really nice it is made of silicone um and uh, and i want to share with you a couple of things that you may see here in um in your photo i like the fact that um this little white end that basically you would uh pop on your mouthpiece um it was really nice and smooth it sat up higher um which was a i think a perk um but again i like the it was slim it, it stood up higher whenever we would sit it into our holder um that was nice the other thing is is that i love because it, if you have an old op like i do uh, and I keep harping on my doctor, maybe we'll get some new equipment sooner or later. Um, I love the fact of having the metal hook. Now there's a metal hook and if you look closely, you'll be able to see that. Um, I liked having that hook and I'll tell you that one of the things that I did was um, I hooked that onto um, the arm of my chair because I, um, you know, I've, again, I have an old unit um, and sometimes these hoses can be really, really long and being able to have the hook to hook that onto the chair was, was, was nice, you know, and so I really did uh, enjoy that. Take your HVE, twist it off from the existing tubing, and attach the Dry Shield DS1 onto it. Place it back on the toolbar. You have now converted your room into a Dry Shield room. Select your mouthpiece. Select the correct mouthpiece size to ensure a proper seal and for your patient's comfort. Prior to insertion, spray a mixture of air and water on the outer surface of the mouthpiece for moisture. Also, spray the inner lining of the mouthpiece for additional lubrication. Slide the mouthpiece onto the DS1 by rocking it back and forth until it locks into place. Dry Shield is the newest innovation in dental technology that creates a better overall patient experience and reduces your procedure time. The soft, smooth, and flexible mouthpiece is specifically designed for patient safety and comfort. Dry Shield helps keep the working area dry and visible by continuous, uninterrupted suctioning while keeping your tongue and cheek out of the way. Dry Shield also acts as a safety barrier, protecting your airway from potential particles and debris. With Dry Shield, you will not have to strain to keep your mouth open. You can now simply rest your teeth comfortably on the bite block. The key to Dry Shield is to always breathe through your nose. This will ensure comfort and relaxation throughout the appointment. 
First, turn the lever on. Before inserting the mouthpiece, fold the tail towards the center of the mouthpiece. Next, fold the sides together. Ask the patient to open their mouth while reminding them to focus on breathing through their nose to promote relaxation. Slowly insert the mouthpiece lining up the front edge of the bite block with the distal of the canine. Then, let go of the mouthpiece, letting it adapt to the oral cavity. Use finger pressure to adapt the cheek retractor along the inner surface of the cheek. Adapt the top of the mouthpiece to the palate and the bottom of the mouthpiece to the floor of the mouth. The narrow portion of the mouthpiece should be distal to the most posterior molar. Reposition the upper and lower lips around the corners of the bite block. You are now ready to do dry shield dentistry. Again, don't forget to remind the patient to breathe through the nose during use of the dry shield. When treatment is completed, have the patient open wide and gently remove the mouthpiece. To remove the mouthpiece when the procedure is over, simply rock the mouthpiece back and forth until it detaches from the DS1. Detach the bite block from the mouthpiece and place them in the ultrasonic for a minimum of 15 minutes. Once the mouthpiece and bite block have been thoroughly cleaned and rinsed, you are now ready to sterilize them. Place the bite block and mouthpiece into an autoclave pouch and mark the pouch with the size and number of times used. You can now put it through the steam autoclave along with the rest of your dental tools. The key to success with Dry Shield is sizing the correct mouthpiece for your patient to ensure the best seal. Here, you can see a poor seal there is a gap between the mouthpiece and the palate. This poor seal could lead to poor suctioning and pooling. In this case, the mouthpiece is too small. To correct this, go up at least one size and reevaluate. For this area, there is a gap between the mouthpiece and the floor of the mouth. Again, this poor seal may cause poor suctioning and pooling. The mouthpiece is too small. Go up at least one size and reevaluate. Here, the mouthpiece is too large. You can also see the bite block is also too large and is sticking outside of the mouth. A seal is not formed and a smaller mouthpiece is needed. A good indication that your patient is a mouth breather is an active tongue pushing on the dry shield mouthpiece. An active tongue can affect optimum suctioning of the oral cavity and patient comfort. Simply reminding your patient to focus on breathing through their nose will relax the tongue and correct this. Remind the patient to rest their teeth on the bite block versus biting down hard on it. Biting too hard on the bite block may cause patient discomfort and displacement of the bite block, as well as decreasing the patient's vertical opening and your visibility. To attach the bite block to the mouthpiece, squeeze the mouthpiece while simultaneously pulling the strap on the bite block over the mouthpiece. Slide the strap into the notched area on the mouthpiece and slide the bite block onto the mouthpiece. With an index finger, press the plug into the bite block undercut slot. Ensure a snug fit and that the bite block is locked into place with the strap lying flush with the mouthpiece. To detach the bite block from the mouthpiece, Pull the bite block off of the mouthpiece, detach it from the plug, and gently slide the bite block strap off of the mouthpiece. To split a high suction line, simply detach the high suction tubing from the canister port and replace it with the Dry Shield Y connector kit. You are now ready to dedicate one end to the Dry Shield and the other end to a second high suction line. Don't forget to give your patient encouragement and to remind them to breathe through their nose. Unlike the standard rubber bite block, the dry shield bite block is attached to a mouthpiece. As you slide the bite block posteriorly, the mouthpiece will simultaneously slide towards the back of the oral cavity. Keeping the patient's gag reflex in mind, carefully slide the dry shield bite block further back as needed.
Um, but I do like the fact that, again, that little hook that I reminded you about, that to me was a really big perk, probably the number one perk other than the uh, being able to sterilize it. Now, let's look at Haley real quick. Let's just, let me show you what we did here. Um, I was basically getting her ready to uh, repair two sealants. And, um, you know, that patient cooperation is very, very important. Um, and again, thinking about explaining things to the patient um, and most importantly, going back to that lubricating it, making sure that it's wet because that was something that, again, one of my team members didn't do, okay? No matter what side you're on, you know, really had good visibility, again, and able to, um, you know, maneuver back and forth. So that's the dry shield. Now let's talk about the Mr. Thirsty. The Mr. Thirsty is from Zerk. Um, the Mr. Thirsty is basically what we would say, um, you know, when you think about economical, uh, economic cost, um, and one of the things that we see a lot, which is even in my own practice, we have 25 ops. Yes, our office is kind of like a mini village, uh, I would say. And um, But we have to be careful because if one of us is using one type of isolation device you know, sometimes the team members get a little jealous. Um, and we have five dentists. We've got a pediatrist and four general dentists. And um, my doctor said, there's no way that I can afford to buy an isolite for every room or, um, you know, a, an isodry. So I need options. And so one of the things that was great about the Mr. Thirsty was, you know, the expense of, of ordering it. Now, the other thing is it is disposable. It comes in two sizes. Sometimes having too many sizes can be confusing to the team. You know, you think about a small... Um, you know, a, a, a small or extra small and then a medium and large. Um, I can tell you that most of my patients were the medium or the blue and, uh, and that just made it really easy. The only time we ever use the purple is if, uh, you know, we had a pedo um, and that's going to be in Dr. Sproul's uh, room. Uh, and so that's when he's going to really use it. But it was easier for him again to, um, to be able to um, just choose that as well. Simple, simple, easy to, to really just place it right into the suction um, and you're ready to go. So just want to show that and demonstrate that really quickly. It is only one step. So you open the package and it's ready to go. So here you'll see, you just put it right into your high volume suction, bend it a little bit, and then just place it right in. Now, there are sometimes when, you know, some, some clinicians like to go ahead and put it behind the last molar and then slide it. Personally, I like to get the bite block in first. Um, only because I just felt like it made it easier. But again, it just there's no right or wrong. Make sure too that you don't don't gather or capture the patient's lip um, in that because you definitely don't want the patient to um, you know to get an area there where they um, hurt their lip. Okay, so this is how it looks. This is basically again um, nice and smooth, and, uh, and and a lot of team members will say, well, do you have really good suction with this because. Um, you know, it's the disposable and, um, and very easy to just connect. And I have to tell you, yes, I mean, the, uh, the suction on the Mr. Thirsty is very, very good. Um, and you would think sometimes of something like that, it, it may not be. And I was pleasantly surprised. The other thing is, is that if you want a hose, you can order it. So that's an option, you know, and uh, if you need an extra hose or you want to make sure that you've got an extra, um, you know, way to be able to still have your high volume suction for assistance and then also have an isolation device, um, you know, you can do that and, and they offer that um, in, a, uh, in a kit. The other thing is, is that you can get it from 25 um, in a pack or up to 100. Um, and again, the, the pedo small is what we're going to utilize for the purple and then the blue large. Um, what I would say it's really not an extra large. It's really more um, the medium. Um, that's what we're going to utilize for um, the blue. And so, um, so again, let me look here. And let's show you how Haley did really quickly. Um, you can see that it's nice and comfortable for her and uh, it was just really, really easy to get in there um, and just have her bite down. The other question is um, some team members will feel like um, they would ask me, well, do you feel like that's going to fall out because it's so short and it doesn't really have the extension as some of the other um, high volume uh, aerosol systems that we're utilizing? Um, and, and no, I didn't feel that it was going to pop out. I didn't feel that it was going to, you know, uh, move around. And, um, and there is something to be said to have your own hose because sometimes some of the hoses that we're utilizing are stiff and hard and they don't really bend as much as the one that we're used to utilizing. So that's one of the things that I think we really got to look at as well is the hoses have to be comfortable and they have to be uh, bendable, right? Because we're not just going to sit and uh, wear them in or work them in and uh, down the road, they're going to get softer. It's, it's really not going to happen here. So we want to make sure that, um, that you know that. Now let's move on to the next one, the relief. Um, I was really blessed to actually have this 
uh, prior to really anyone in their practices. And, um, and because I did a lot of sealants and I talked a lot about or taught a lot of courses to dental assistants and, uh, and dental hygiene assistants. And so, um, you know, calls came to me and said, hey, we've got a new product. We really would love for you to evaluate it because a lot of my team members were using dry angles. And, you know, I, sometimes we forget to wet them and they would just take them out and then pull some of the tissue, um, you know, and cause some irritation in the patient's mouth. But most importantly, um, constantly having to replenish those dry angles sometimes can be a pain. Now, I'll tell you in the same age, there's better dry angles than there used to be. Um, but one of the things that I think about the relief is a couple of perks to that. You know, it is easy to place because it's going to go right into the patient's cheek. Um, it also is very easy to utilize in hygiene. Um, and I think this is where it lies. Um, my hygienist absolutely loves it. Um, and we see a lot of elderly patients. We actually have patients from a nursing home come uh, to our office and we work on them and it's hard and there's no way, I can be honest, that we're going to be able to put a bite block into a lot of these elder patients' mouths. But the one thing about the relief is that they can close on it, which is something that I think they really like, right? We're still getting a lot of the saliva um, and, and really having um, those aerosols controlled, but one of the best parts I think is being able to bite down and close. Um, one of the things that my mother-in-law, God rest her soul, she passed away due to COVID. And um, one of the things that she hated was the fact that um, our ultrasonic, it was a dinosaur too, um, sprayed out so much water and I could hear her coughing or getting choked. And these are reasons why we utilize a lot of these devices as well is to help with the saliva pool, but most importantly, helping those patients if they're coughing um, to not interrupt procedure time and then controlling the aerosols, right? But before we had COVID, that was the main concern for us is every time the patient would cough, we'd have to stop or we'd have to sit them up or we'd have to give them some water. So those interruptions of procedures is a huge plus now with all of these devices. Um, the other thing is, is that the leaf is disposable. You can just take it right off, toss it. It comes in a bag of 100. And, um, and then we basically just utilize it. It has three, ho three um, hoses. Um, so you can place those right into the autoclave, which is very good. But again, um, I feel like there is uses for each one of these devices. And where I feel it lies is in the hygiene chair. I think it is really, really um, been more accepted um, when we think about hygiene. Okay. And so other thing is, is you can easily just maneuver it pretty quickly. That's something that's a little bit different than some of the other devices because you can just loosen it, lift it, and just slide it right, just reverse it, right? And place it right back in where you were. Um, it also has this U end of the hose, which allows us to kind of hook that onto the patient's mouth. And one of the things about my hygienist is they were used to bending the slava ejector. So this is where, you know, it was um, something that felt uh, good to them is the fact that they didn't have to change their technique too much because they were always bending the slava ejector and now they don't have to do that anymore, right? So this little U shape, which I'll show you in a minute, allows it to just kind of hook into the patient's uh, mouth. And so that really is something that I think was a huge plus. So let me just show you quickly how you put it together. And uh, all you do is just slip it right into the HVE system or again, you can use the hose. Personally, I like to have a longer hose. I thought this was really too short. Um, and so I like to have the hose. So what I would do is I would have the hose um, and just place it onto the end. It has a really long extension here. We're going to place that right into the high volume suction. Okay, as so. Um, the other thing is, is that the hose might be a little bit long. So the beauty is if you needed to cut it, you can. Um, we just use it. I got this from Andy um, for a tale of two hygienists. If you've never heard of Andy, he does an amazing job with um, his hygiene podcast. I love listening to him. And this was a huge um, tip that I got from him. He just used a pocketbook hanger because sometimes with the relief, it was hard to get it to, you didn't know where to put it because it didn't have a lock in on the hose to be able to really sit it somewhere. So if you take your HVE and you sit it back into the holder, the leaf kind of hung or, or the hose kind of hung down or we'd have to, uh, you know, wrap it over something. So I thought this was a great idea. Um, and having that pocketbook holder, I think was a huge plus. And so Coles, if you're listening tonight, go buy some, uh, you know, pocketbook holders and put them into the relief kit. I think that was really the most important uh, thing to, you know, really remind us about, right? So here we are, we're using it during the uh, procedure. You can see that um, we're utilizing our 
uh, ultrasonic scaler. And again, Hygienist is using the relief. You can see the little hook um, and, uh, and really just getting right into the cheek area. Very comfortable. It's very soft. Um, it has three holes, so it's going to help, you know, pull that saliva. Um, and, uh, and really taking a look here. I like to usually turn up the, the volume so you can really hear it. So yeah, taking it out and being able to go back and forth, I think again, huge perk there. All right now, I will say that um, Colzer just came out with a with a small version. I call it the pedo, but it's really not the pedo. Uh, it's a smaller end because one of the downside, probably one of the only downsides, other than um, uh, uh, you know not being autoclavable because it's not, it's disposable, um, is the fact that um, and no bite block. Again, some some doctors, you know, we think about our occlusion camp doctors, you know, Panky Dawson spear they don't like to uh utilize a lot of bite blocks you know because they do worry about joints um so you know that's something to think about this one does not have the bite block um but the other thing is is having that other size one of the things that um, a lot of team members would say is i wish it was smaller um because not all patients have this large mouth and sometimes they would take a scissors and kind of cut it because it is nice and soft but it's nice to be able to now have that other size offering okay so let's talk about the PureVac. This is the uh, a suction device, HVE device from Dent Supply Serona. And, um, and it's fairly new. Um, the one thing about it is that it does have a mirror ended tip. Um, it really allows us to utilize one hand. And that was something that I think um, hygienists really like. Um, and the end is very wide. So when you think about your standard HVE tip, yes, we can suction a lot of aerosols and a lot of saliva, but this one kind of comes out a little bit wider at the end. I think honestly that um, this to me would be really good in hygiene um, and also in our chair as assistants. The only downside is I felt it was a little bit short. So um, if I could ask, you know, Den Supply, and I love all of their products and, um, and really enjoy utilizing a lot of the materials that they invent or they have. Um, the one thing that I would say is this is really made for a hygienist hands and not so much an assistant's hands because I feel it's a little too short. So Den Supply make it longer, okay? Um, but I will say that having that mirror on the end is a huge plus. And the other thing about the mirror is it doesn't fog. Now, when I say that, it doesn't fog, you know, a lot of hygienists, their ears perk up because that's one of the things that, again, going back to having to stop or having to wipe your mirror and things like that, you know, it's something to really, again, think about. Um, we also want you to know that you will as a hygienist, if you're utilizing it, you're going to have to train yourself to go back to utilizing an HVE and it's going to take some time getting used to, okay? So, again, want to make sure that you know that. The other thing is, is that um, it is a little bit heavier than your metal mirror and listen that is not something that den supply can control anything that's going to be hooked to a hose is going to be heavier uh, than something you're just holding a metal instrument so you can't compare that and this is one of the things that i see a lot um uh, is it being compared to a instrument and that's not fair uh to den supply you know um, that's to me not fair to them because of the fact that it's not the same they're very different so when you think about um holding it and again hearing um, hygienists say, well, this hose is heavy um, and it's it's really hard to hold the mirror. Again, very differences in that, right? And so you can't compare it. I'm going to tell you now, and that's not, not right if we are. Um, again, looking at it fogging up and not having that, that's really, really a great perk. The other thing is, is being able to have that reflection, I think, is also a plus. I will say that this is a really, really good product when you think about doing laser technique. Um, Lynn does a lot of laser therapy, and she did like the fact that she could get really, really close up on it. The other thing is she does a lot, again, she does a lot, utilizes a lot of lasers. She, uh, she gives a bazillion courses on laser therapy for hygienists, and I can tell you that when she's got a herpetic lesion, um, that is right on top of it. I mean, right on top of it. And, uh, you know, it's something that, um, you know, she really is scared about, right, doing, and um, she really wants to make sure that she's protected of herself, especially now more than ever. Um, but having this is one of the things that she said was it really gave me a little bit more peace of mind. I wish I'd had it a long time ago because um, she does have a lot of uh, patients who return for her to, to, you know, perform that procedure. So, again, 
I think that's a plus. The other thing is, is that, um, you know, again, the opening is wide. We also know that the mirror is there. It is round. Now, one of the things about a lot of HVEs out there is that it's sharp because it's cut by machine and it can cut the mucosa. It can cut the tissue. Um, we can call sometimes little canker sores with it. Um, especially if you're a new assistant out there and we know that, right? We, we're sucking up the tongue. Uh, now listen, this is forceful. Okay. So be careful. Um, the downside to me was I had to be really careful because I almost sucked up a cotton roll, uh, you know, because if you're, you know, holding things and passing things to your doctor and you're not really paying attention and you've also got some cotton rolls in there, you can easily suck that up. So don't think that it's not strong uh, and has that force to really make sure that we're, you know, getting the aerosols. It does. So that's one of the things I want you to really be careful about is where you're placing it. <laughs> Ask me how I know. All right. So um, again, let's let's back up just a little bit. Um, the hose is is stiff. Okay, I cannot lie. That's going to be a question. I know that somebody's going to ask me. Um, yes, uh, it's very easy to stick right into the suction um, hose, and most importantly, it already um, comes with three um, ends to it, which is nice. They're all autoclavable, which is really nice. I will say that um, in my practice, we ordered three more because I wanted my hygienist to be able to have enough pretty much throughout the day, um, not to be forced to have to worry so much about not having one. Um, the other thing is, again, you're going to have to train yourself, okay? N no, you know, there no ifs, ands, or buts about it if you're a hygienist because, again, we're not used to holding those. They're not used to holding those. Um, but having the mirror that doesn't fog up is also a huge, huge plus. The other thing is, is I like this and I'll tell you, I kind of stole it so I could utilize it with all my new assistants out there um, because it's hard when you're a new assistant to really remember where you're supposed to sit and where you're supposed to place your suction. So, um, so thank you Display for, for making this. I did steal it. So um, again, thinking about, um, you know, having the, um, you know, having the hose, having the three, uh, you know, extra um, HV ends to it and uh, and just being able to you can pretty much know that you're probably going to order some extra um, You know mirrors to go in that. Okay, very easy to retract and I think the easiness comes from being able to have the rounder end that's larger um, And again, you know looking at that. Let's let's show you a, a quick video This is Clarissa in my practice. You can see here where she's utilizing it to retract the tongue The hardest thing for her again is learning how to do that right and maneuvering it um, so you are going to have to train yourself and especially um, knowing where you're placing it. So practicing with it. Again, in dentistry, we always think we're going to use something one time and we're going to get it. And if it doesn't work, we're done with it. And that, again, is not fair to the manufacturer. A lot of times when we see uh, downfalls or when we see things that happen with materials and, um, and instruments that we're using in dentistry, I will tell you that um, we blame it on the manufacturer. We always say we we'll blame it on them and we never take the responsibility for ourselves. And most of the time we didn't either read directions because I'm going to be honest with you, you know, a lot of times you don't read directions, right? We'll look at pictures, but we don't read directions. The other thing is, is we want to make sure that, um, you know, we try something at least five times. And I learned that from Michael Miller with reality. And I so appreciate that because so many times more than uh, I can even count, we'll try something one time and we never utilize it again. And it is a learning curve. And then until we use something at least five times, we cannot judge it. We cannot evaluate it or just throw it aside and never use it again. Because that to me is sad. You made this investment into, um, into this equipment. You know, it's kind of like having a ceramic machine in the corner and never touching it. We see that, you know, having a scanner and we never utilize it. Um, you have to tell yourself, I'm going to utilize this. And the other thing is, is, um, you know, making sure that we're protecting ourselves. And that is the most important thing here. So again, looking at, you know, harmful aerosols and going back to that, you know, 90% is what I hear. Um, and it goes up anywhere from again, 90 to 95. It's kind of hard to get that number nailed in. Um, but, you know, thinking about, you know, this, you know, these aerosols and comparing it to slava ejectors, you almost, I'll tell you, we don't even use it unless we really have to now because of all these devices. They're just amazing. And I can say that, you know, when you get into deciding which one that you want for your practice, this is the hardest thing because, you know, you have to really think about, you know, what is it that you're going to utilize it for? So I'm going to sum it up just a little bit for you, okay? And again, I really enjoyed all five of these, and I can tell you that I'm keeping all five in my practice. Why am I doing that? Because I feel like with my team, one's going to like one versus the other. And boy, is it a plus to be able to have 
um, a selection for my team to decide what really works best in their hands. And so when I back up a little bit, I feel that with the Isolite 3, um, for you know Lynn, she loved it because she had the illumination. If you have a hygienist that doesn't have a light on their loops, this is such a huge perk for them because I think sometimes we just assume that, or the doctor just assumes that hygienists don't need loops, much ne less need a light. And that is absolutely wrong, okay? You really have to have your hygienist have a light. Um, and But with the Isolite 3, we've got a light, right? Um, the one thing though that is sometimes, you know, you gotta think about the time of having to take it out and flip it over, okay? And most importantly, thinking about the patients that you're seeing. And um, But I will say that it is nice to have that. And again, being able to, um, uh, you know, have the patient being open at least for uh, the right side. And then we're going to move it to the left side, right? And I'm not a hygienist, but I can imagine what it would be like. The other thing is, is I think the Isolite was such a perk with the light um, during my procedure, you know, and being able to turn that ambient light down was really, really nice. It gave me as a patient peace of mind, although not all patients know that that's what we're doing. Um, but I think for my doctor and myself, it was a peace of mind. The other thing is, is just being able to shut and turn off the light. I think when we think about patients' anxiety, um, that was really cool. And I mean that, that was really cool to be able to have that. So I am uh, very, very excited for the Isolite 3. Again, the only thing I can say is just having to, um, for it to be disposable. You know, you gotta be ready for that. Um, when we think about the dry shield, the number one perk was autoclavable. Uh, uh, number one, number one, number one, autoclavable. You know, because again, you know, you try it in, doesn't fit, it's, it's gone, right? And I know somebody out there is going to try to cold sterilize this thing and use it over and over and over. Um, but, you know, when it says, you know, one time use, it's one time use. So I think the biggest perk um, was that. The other thing is, is I like the hook. Again, I thought that was huge. And, and I'm sure uh, if there's any rep watching or listening uh, you know, to this tonight, they're like, really? Out of all the things, that's the one of the things that you like? Um, yeah, it was. Um, I think that was a huge plus. Um, because again, you never know what type of, or how old the equipment that we're utilizing. The other thing is, is that I like the fact that it's set up higher in the holder. I think that was huge. You know, sitting up higher, um, uh, you know, was again, a nice perk. So, um, and the slender, uh, slender, um, design. So, you know, think about that. But again, I think the best part about that was the being on the clavable. Now let's talk about the Mr. Thirsty. Mr. Thirsty is a great alternative if we need disposable and we really need to think about economics. It is very, very economical. And so when my team is crying about not having an isolate or having a, a dry shield, I can hand them the Mr. Thirsty um, and uh, they still get the best of both worlds, right? Um, but again, if you got a really big practice, you have to look at those things. And um, But I feel like the time that was saved is the same amount of time with the Mr. Thirsty as it was with the Dry Shield and the Isolite. The time is the same. I, I don't care what the manufacturer tells you, all three of those, the time was the same. The placement was the same, okay? Pretty much the size was very similar. You know, yes, you've got six uh, options versus the two from Mr. Thirsty, but sometimes giving the team too many options is confusing. So I think that was a huge plus. And the other thing is, is that we always get asked, is that as strong as the other two systems? Yeah, I, I, I did not really see a big difference. The only difference with the Isolite 3 is that we could turn down uh, the amount of suction that we really needed. So I think that was kind of neat. That was cool. Um, but with the Mr. Thirsty, you know, I can't poo-poo it by no means because it was it was soft. It was easy to place. Um, I will say that the only downside to that was you really want to use the hose. You really need the hose um, because I like having a little bit longer area to, um, you know, to hang off the patient. And um, and again, I that was the only thing that I, I really wanted um, and I'm utilizing is the hose. Let's talk about the relief. The relief being disposable. Um, if you're not comfortable having a bite block, which some doctors aren't and some hygienists aren't, um, one of the hygienists is a really good friend of mine in Dr. Sinclair's office, cannot live without these reliefs. They order them religiously. They love them for, uh, you know, uh, profing or using an air polisher. They will not use an air polisher on a patient if they don't have it. Um, and so that was kind of neat to hear their feedback on it. Love the fact that it was disposable, um, very similar to a dry angle. So if you're doing sealants, I think that's huge. Um, and then having it, again, be disposable, buying it in a pack of 100, that's one of the things you'll have to do because you're, you're tossing them out, right? So um, you really want to make sure you've got enough on hand because she'll call me sometimes and say, hey, do you have any extra reliefs? Um, and so, you know, just making sure you have that. But those three hoses you can utilize uh, and have them autoclaved. Um, but you really want to always have enough hoses 
Um, so you can do that. And then last but not least, the PureVac, the biggest perk from the PureVac, I think was, first of all, um, having the wider end suction. Second of all, having a light um, or a mirror that um, you, you feel like you could get some reflection, but most importantly, it didn't fog. That was the, probably the biggest perk, I think, other than the wide end. Now, the one downside to it is that hose is stiff. It is stiff. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. It's stiff. So if I could say anything to Dent Supply Serona, I would say maybe using a softer hose um, just to make sure of that. And I think there's probably a reason why it is stiff. I'm not sure what it is yet, but um, but I will say that um, really controlling those aerosols. And like I said, with Lynn uh, doing these herpetic lesions, oh man, she goes straight for the pure back. So I think, you know, there's something to be said for that. And all of these pieces of equipment have a place in your practice. And again, I'm spoiled because I have all, I'm going to have all five. Um, but I will say that I really enjoyed it. And I thank so much to Shine for allowing me to, to utilize all of these, but most importantly, the manufacturers to let me give you my evaluation. And, but most importantly, let me be honest, because I would tell you that I think all of these were amazing. And again, uses for all different types of procedures and maybe for different clinicians. So it was fun. I, I really, really wish I'd had more time. I think more to do my evaluation. That was the only thing that I uh, would like to have had more of, but, um, but I can assure you that every one of these, you really can't go wrong. You just have to think about what procedures you're going to be utilizing it for and making sure that you're not just pushing it off on a team member. Like if you're a dentist and you're doing restorative, not having the same for maybe your hygienist, maybe giving them a chance to, to try it or understand. And I think if I could leave you with anything, get your rep in that office to really, again, talk about the differences, let you make sure you have enough uh, understanding of how each one works because there's nobody that knows more than the Henry Schein reps because they're trained on every one of these pieces of equipment. They know. So, you know, don't just assume they're there to sell you something. They're there to educate you to find out what's the best for your practice, okay? So I want to pause here now and I want to give plenty of time for you to be able to answer or ask me questions that I can answer for you. Um, and most importantly, I want you to know you can always, always reach out to me. Um, I'm Shannon at chairsideassisting.com. I'm Shannon at chairsideassisting.com. I'm getting tongue tied. Um, my website is the Academy of Chairside Assisting. And again, I am so, so grateful um, for this chance and opportunity to be able to share with you my thoughts. And so let's now go into some of your questions. And if there's some questions that we don't have a chance to answer tonight, um, feel free to email me and uh, I'll be more than happy to answer those. So let's jump to our questions. Thank you, great presentation. Uh, the first question is, is the, pure back, is the pure back heavy where it creates drag and hand fatigue? You know what? The PureVac is not heavy. Okay. It is not heavy. I think one of the things that I got to be honest about is that I took the hose and I actually cut it because um, it's pretty long and you've got two little hoses that kind of go down. So what I did is um, I like that device, but one of the things that some, a lot of things you can do is you can actually trim the hose, right? So that helped. Um, but as far as holding it, no, it was not heavy at all. Um, there's a couple of pros I want to just mention though, is that that, you know, at the end, it's round and it's pretty big, you know, so when you think about, be careful with your cotton roll, <laughs> um, ask me how I know, because I almost sucked it up, um, but having the mirror is a plus, because again, sometimes if I'm an assistant and holding it, I don't have a mirror, I can't really see sometimes, so it allowed me to kind of see what was going on. Um, the other thing is that um, you're going to have to train yourself, you know, if you're not used to, and I'm talking to hygienists out there, if you're not used to holding uh, high speed suction, uh, except for when you were in school, um, that's one of the things you're going to have to get used to. And that was one of the hardest things, even for Lynn, um, when we were talking about holding it. But as far as being heavy, no, it, it's not heavy at all. Is the isolate the only one with a light feature? Right now, yes. And that's a huge plus. Um, I will say that I had the older version and I, I really can appreciate the fact of being able to turn the light down. You know, I, I think that's a huge piece right now. Um, and the other thing is, it's just hearing it. You know, when you hear the suction and hear the noise, um, those are the things that you really want to be looking for. So I think that's um, one of the best parts about it. Um, I think the only thing that you really got to pay attention to is where is the plug going to be? You know, that's really, and that's a no brainer for most of you that have new equipment and uh, don't have some of the equipment needs to be in the Smithsonian like I did, right? But just thinking about that. But the good news is, is that having that light is, is really, really nice. And then being able to have the ambient light is a, a perk as well. Which device would you say has the strongest suction? 
Oh, <laughs> that's a one. Um, you know, it's hard to compare because I can tell you that I was in one op that were utilizing the Isolite 3. Then when I was in another op with my hygienist, it was very different. And then I was in the Smithsonian op and it was different. Um, so that's tough. Um, I will say that um, every one of them had a really solid suction. And I mean that, not just trying to play neutral. Um, I will say that, you know, with the Isolite, of course, it's going to have a little bit more suction because it's got a, it's got a power cord too, right? It's got the power for the light, but I feel like that kind of um, allowed us to see more and I feel like it was strong, but I don't want to say that the dry shield wasn't because it was too. I mean, we removed some amalgam and the pieces were flying and we were able to control that um, all the way down to the Mr. Thirsty um, that was really sucking up uh, the water as well. And, you know, you really have to make sure when you talk about the ends um, that you really, you know, you know how to insert them. Because one of the things I will say about some of the ends of the devices was that, you know, it, you can be really, you can cut your patient when you're putting it in. So you got to practice, I would say practice on yourself first, because it was easier for me to put it in and know where it's going to go. And I hate to say, we're going to, we're going to, you know, use one. Um, but it is important for the team to know how it's going to feel, because unless you know how it feels, you're going to take that bite block and that suction bite, and you're just going to cram it in the patient's mouth, which is what I I did to my daughter uh, and she said mom be careful and I was like you're okay and she's like no it's you know you got to be careful when you put it in she's a dental assistant too um, but then I said let me try it on myself and I found that when I did it on myself um, it made it easier for me to place it in the patient so every one of these I put in my own mouth and tried it in um, but I will tell you I cannot say that one suction was better than the other um, I will say that, you know, just looking at it, I think all three were pretty much, you know, uh, I, I, standard level, all of them were across the board, very similar. All right, we've got a couple comments here about mouthpieces specifically, one of which is uh, Zyrus has really good sizing technique training uh, for the isolite. And then the other one is good mouthpiece sizing is important and you can eliminate waste right from the start. Absolutely. This is why I think, you know, when you're looking at training, you don't want to just assume you know. And again, in dentistry, this has been the biggest downfall for us as clinicians. We don't read directions. We don't. We think we can open up anything and utilize it because we feel we know, right? Um, and I know that's a lot of things that we do in life. But you have to read and you have to really look at, you know, does this have a ruler? Or does this, you know, what are the sizes? But most importantly, I think sometimes we skip the rep. We skip over the rep and just assume that they really don't know and they're just there to sell us. But that is the exact opposite thing we have to keep out of our mind because the rep has been trained by every one of these manufacturers with these products and they know, you know, exactly how to utilize them. And I think that's something that we have to really look at. But most importantly, thinking, where can I go and watch these videos? Where can I go and really see the difference between them? Which is why I'm glad that Shine had this tonight. Um, we're going to add more videos to this. So this way you'll be able to see it. But um but spend time with your rep, you know, and I think that will minimize the waste because if you just open it up and start sticking in a different patient's mouth and you realize that it wasn't the right size, of course you're going to, um, you know, there it goes, you gotta throw it away. So you don't wanna waste. This one is specifically about the relief system, but I'm gonna change it to generically for all of them. Do they all meet CDC guidelines? Absolutely, they do, every single one. All right. Are they all, do they all provide equal effectiveness regarding to aerosol control? No, I will not lie to you. No, they don't. Um, there are, you have to think about though, what's on, what's, what's on the other end, right? Is it an ultrasonic? Is it a handpiece? Is it a slow speed? You know, those are the things we really have to look at. Um, you know, you can't really um, compare when you're not utilizing it for the same procedure. And that's what I see a lot with manufacturers. They're comparing an ultrasonic a cleaning appointment to a crown prep to a sealant, you know, and things like that. You can't do that, you know, utilizing a high speed, slow speed. Um, so I think, you know, when you think about what it is that you're doing, be, you know, I will tell you my practice, not just because I evaluated these products, I have two or three of these products already in my office because they are utilized for different procedures and I think for different clinicians. So it's not a one size fits all. Um, but again, you can't, you know, say one is better for this versus the other when it comes to, you know, just one uh, clinical procedure. It, they're really utilized for different things. And so that's what I want you to really have an open mind about. You talk about size and price and convenience, but what about the science? What do the CDC and OSAP say are aerosol devices and fluid devices? 
Well, they will say that when you're utilizing a device, remember what I said, it's anywhere from 96 to 98%. Now you'll hear a couple of different percentages, right? But even if it's 95, it's 95 that we didn't have before. When we think about how many people use a rubber dam, oh my gosh, less than 6% of the population before COVID, you know, and then we think about all these devices that nobody really thought was that important, you know, and I think that was an eye opener. You know, when COVID hit, we we're being so protective, so many things. Um, and I think that was a wake up call for us for the fact that we weren't even utilizing a lot of these, um, you know, rate devices for aerosol spray. You know, it was almost like, well, I've got a, I've got a, you know, saliva ejector, I've got an HVE, um, I'm good, right? And I never had that mentality, which is why I use rubber dam a lot. So I think those are the things that we really have to look at. But the CDC basically says if you look at the percentage of where it is in controlling the aerosols, it's anywhere consistently 94 to 98 percent, you know, depending on the procedure. Do these devices clog easily? Can they handle thick, quote, ropey saliva? Quote. Can I tell you? Yes. I mean that, absolutely. Um, I, I will say that my daughter is a saliva monster. That was one of the things I complained about. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't realize you had all this saliva. You should never have a cavity, right? Um, I will say that all of the um, devices, pretty much when you think about um, the Mr. Thirsty, the, um, the Isodry and also the Isolite, um, yes, all of those, they're very powerful. I think we just didn't, I guess we don't assume that they are, but every one of them, any type of saliva. now. Don't get the conception that, you know, we were doing that amalgam and it's going to suck up all these little pieces or if you're removing a crown, it's going to suck up. That's not what this is for. And that was one of the things I think that a lot of team members assume is that these devices are going to help pick up the pieces of metal or, um, again, you know, when the crown, when the doctor's cutting the crown off, that's not what these are for. Now, the PureVac system will suck up that because remember, it's more of like an HVE. Um, but the other three, um, including the relief, they're not made for that. They're made just for saliva, right? And, uh, and so that's one thing you have to kind of tell yourself, that's not going to happen if that's what you thought. Which devices are acceptable for reducing aerosols when using ultrasonics? All of them, all of them. It just depends on what you want. You know, like I said, you know, with Lynn, she utilized the PureVac and, she, uh, and then she also uses the Isolite. Um, so that's tough for some hygienists, you know, to hold that. So that's what you got to think about. The relief is good if you have like older, I think an older generation of patients will not let you put that block. That's one of the things that I did notice. Um, like for my mother-in-law, um, who's no, no longer with us, rest her, whole, rest her soul, um, had to have the relief because she had to be able to close, you know, but there's no way I could put a bite block in there for her to bite down on. So, um, so I think you got to think about your patient, which is why I said you got to have more than one. Um, but, um, but I think that that's one of the things you got to look at for the, the um, you know, for ultrasonics depends on your preference, but all of them are good. It just depends on, do you want something that has a bite block or do you want something that basically, you know, it's just kind of like a dry angle. And that's what you've got to kind of ask yourself is what would fit best in your hands. Uh, question comment about the relief. I was told the relief does not have large enough bores. Is that true? Well, the relief is something that, again, you think about, it goes into the cheek. It's not going to go to the back of the throat and circle around where I think some of the other devices have a one step up. Because again, when you've got that device that's got holes all the way around, you're going to have a little bit more, um, you know, reduction in, in the, I think the saliva or the water. I mean, that's kind of not, you don't want to compare them because it's kind of not fair. I think with the relief, what it's doing is it's, it's holding that area and keeping it, you know, as much as it possibly can. Don't get me wrong. We poured water, a whole cup of water in that it was like a minute and a half. It suctioned it out, but uh, you know, you kind of can't say that it's going to not, you know, it's going to be as strong as some of these other devices based upon how many holes are in the, um, in the, in the, in the block itself. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. Will calculus clog some of this, some of these systems with small holes? No, I would tell you that it'll probably get caught depending on it, but most of us know when there's calculus there, it's, it's big sizes. Um, of course, the PureVac, you're gonna be able to suck it right up. Um, but the other ones, you know, what we find is it'll kind of attach itself to it and we may have to remove it. But again, depending on the size, but most of the time it will, you know, it, it kind of catches it, which is a good thing. I use air water much more without being able to use the Cavitron, which I use to rinse as I want. Is there any research on air water syringe aerosol? You know, 
there, there is some out there. Um, I will say that I would refer to the CDC for that, but also the ADA has a lot of information um, because there are a lot of issues. Now, when we look at our air water syringes and we think about, do we want metal? Do we want plastic? What kind of adapter does it have? And so I know that there's a lot, uh, there's some out there that are really, really good and there's some that are not so great. I would also refer to, I think the Dental Advisor has probably the best evaluation company. And, and I mean that wholeheartedly. They do an amazing job and it's, it's, you know, it's very, very honest. And that's what I'm looking for. And I would, I would refer you to Dental Advisor to take a look at some of the studies that John Powers and his team have done there when it comes to those air water syringes and what they have found, because they've got some really good evidence, but most importantly, they've got the science because the whole building does uh, clinical reviews, but it also does scientific reviews. And that's where I would refer you to. Which of the devices in your opinion is best for pediatric dentistry? Ooh. <laughs> That's a tough one because a lot of times it's hard for, depending on the age, you know, my daughter, uh, she wants to be a dentist. So she, she, I could put in the, the Isodry for her. I could put in the Mr. Thirsty. I could put in the, uh, you know, I, I could really use just about anything that I select with her. Um, but my son who's seven, um, who has some autistic tendencies, um, I could never do that. So I think it depends on the maturity of the patient. Now with him, I could use the relief. And, and that was super easy for me to use because he could close on it, right? Um, so I think that's what you have to think about is in PETA, what is the age? You know, what's the age? And a lot of these manufacturers will also give you samples. That's something sometimes I think we don't remind ourselves. A lot of times we don't see quite as much sampling, but sometimes if we go directly to the web, now listen, Isolite is not gonna give you Isolite 3 sample, uh, but you know, some of the companies will also give you those to try. So, you know, really look into that. But I think it depends on the maturity, just like with everything else. Um, you know, maturity of the patient, you know, but you always can try it. And then if it doesn't work, you can take it out. But again, I don't want to waste product. Um, so like I said, with my daughter, I could put just about anything in there, but my son, I would only be able to use the relief. How do you handle the patients that tend to gag when using the isolate? Yeah, um, you got to fold it, you know, and I think too, I made mistakes by not, not, you know, getting it wet. I didn't rinse it off. Of course, I didn't follow direction there, right? Um, lubricating it before I just took it and just put it into the patient's mouth. So you really want to make sure that you are really following the directions. I think that was the first thing that we did wrong, um, but also practicing how you're going to bend it, right? You're going to bend it. And I think that was something you can't just take it and push it into the patient's mouth. You have, first, I like to slide the bite block in to make sure the patient is you know, they propped up, but actually open. And I'll tell me to open a little bit more so I can push it back just a hair because if it's too far forward, um, it's going to move, right? The other thing is, is if you don't have the right size, the patient can overclose. So it's almost like you didn't even have anything in their mouth. And I did that with one of my patients. So you really got to make sure you know the size, but most importantly, knowing how you're going to bend it and, and really guide it in, but get the bite block in first, bend it and put it in, and then just know what, what, Teeth or what manufacturer is going to, what, what that is going to control. Is it going to be on top of the tongue? Is the tongue going to be pushed back? Does a patient need to be, you know, hold their tongue back? A lot of times that's one of the things that I saw a lot with my team is when they would place it, um, they did not have the insert, like pushing the patient's tongue back or sitting on top of the tongue based upon the manufacturer or based upon the product. So just making sure you know exactly where it needs to be. And every one of these manufacturers have step-by-step -step instructions. And again, we don't read, but we'll look at photos, which is nice. Um, and again, all these YouTube videos on every single one of them. So that's what I think sometimes we don't, we feel like we know it and there's nothing wrong with watching the video and then learning how to place it correctly. And even doing it as a team, if you're going to get it, everybody has to be on board, but everybody needs to know how it works. So that's another thing that we want to make sure you, you understand. Great. Now, last question for the evening. If I use a rubber dam for preps and HVE, will these devices do much more for aerosol reduction? That is a good question. Um, I would say, honestly, you can't use a rubber dam with anything that has a bite block. It just will not work. And I'm the rubber dam queen. The only product, um, you know, you could use the PureVac because it's a suction, right? You could suction with it. That's a plus. Um, but the one thing that I will say is really the relief was the only one that I could slide into the patient's mouth and place a rubber dam at the same time. It was the only one. So, you know, I had to be honest. Uh, the other ones, again, having the bite block, you're, you can't. Um, I think it just made it a lot easier for us to just slip in the relief. So there's, again, um, some pros and cons with each one of them. 
Great. Well, thank you, Shannon, for your time this evening. This is all excellent information and super important right now. So thank you for reviewing this with us. Thank you. If, thank you, everybody, for your time tonight. Yeah. If, if anyone has additional questions about aerosol management or any of the products that Shannon covered this evening, please feel free to email us at webinars at Henry Shine, and we will get back to you shortly. Additionally, if you're interested in attending future Henry Shine webinars, visit henryshinedental.com slash webinars for our upcoming schedule. As a thank you for attending this evening, everyone will receive this recording via email later this week. I'd like to thank you all for joining us tonight, and we look forward to seeing you back here on future webinars. Thank you, everyone. And um, my information hopefully will be there so you can, you know, if you have any other questions that we weren't able to answer tonight, we can get to that. Great. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you.